Hey everybody, Mike, Mike Car Shop. Welcome back. So today we're back on the 47 Ford. We're gonna be working on the fuel level sender in the fuel cell and getting it working with the gauge. So this is really part two from the epic fail episode that we had done a week or two ago. Let's watch the show intro and I'll see you in about 30 seconds. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. So I have gifts. Um, we were able to get online and source a sending unit that would fit this cell. The SunPro sending unit um, is not produced anymore from what I can tell. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was able to find a unit that should fit this cell that's made by Bosch. And uh, so we'll get that out here and take a look at it. <clears throat> So it's pretty universal. It does have the same, supposed to have the same sweep as the um, the gauge that we purchased. So it should be just a matter of uh, pulling this out so we can get our hands in there and find out why this won't unscrew. Is that a word, unscrew? Yeah. Um, so we'll have to pull that center of the fuel cell out and put it in there. But the first thing I want to do uh, interesting, I just noticed this does not have a ground on it, so we'll have to figure that out. Probably just an eyelet will be fine. Um, anyway, the, what we want to do is uh, just test this unit with the gauge and make sure that our needle is moving. So let's start there first. And uh, before I even do that, I actually need to toddle my little hind end out to my truck and get those alligator clips that I got on our taco episode just recently. and. Um, make a couple more jumper wires just to make this whole process just a little easier. So I'm going to get a couple jumper wires made and then I'll be right back and we will test this unit with the gauge and make sure that it's uh, whoop, 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 like it's supposed to. All right, so I thought I would take you through the setup here that I have and show you exactly uh, how it's hooked up. So right now I've got my ground, which runs over to my, you follow the yellow wire up, it runs over to my battery negative. The red wire runs to the back of the gauge, and then the purple wire comes from the sending unit and runs up again to the back of the gauge. So if you follow the, the, the circuit here, this red wire runs in, and then the ground is controlled by the variable resistor down here. So right now the gas gauge is down all the way. You can see that, uh, move this over here where it's easier to see. You can see that our float arm is down all the way. So we are down at the empty position. And we have an issue because it's at a little over a quarter of a tank. There's a fix for that I'll show you in a minute. And this isn't written down anywhere that I have found. But if we go down here, and we, we move this up. I've got to get it to where it's, there we go, move it up and down. So if we watch our gauge, getting a terrible glare, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of that for you. There we go, if we watch our gauge, you can see that our gauge is moving as I slide this up and slide that down. Now, we're over full and all the way at the bottom we're in almost a half a tank so let me show you how to fix that if you look down inside you can see a small screwdriver slot that is it's not anywhere in the instructions that i have found um, just from experience i know that you can adjust that with a small screwdriver down in there and adjust where the uh, gauge bottom is now we don't know what's gonna happen on the full side, but quite frankly, I don't care. I would rather have a gas gauge that's accurate on the empty side 
and be inaccurate on the full side than to have one that gets down to a quarter of a tank and runs out of gas. I think you understand the rationale. So I'm gonna try and set this up so that you can see me adjusting this. And uh, this could be a challenge, but um, we'll see if we can show you how to calibrate this gauge uh, accordingly. Okay, so unfortunately the footage of calibrating this gauge is gone. I don't know what happened to it, so I'm just I'm just uh, going to show you what I did. I've already calibrated it, uh, so I don't want to actually mess with it. But what you do is you take your small screwdriver and you put it in there. And then with your sending unit, you make sure that it's all the way empty. And you adjust the screwdriver to get that needle to move to empty. And then, of course, you bring it all the way up to full and you see where that fits. And, and throughout the rest of this video, you're going to see me working on that process and checking things. Um, so, but that's all you do is you take that small screwdriver and you tweak it and you make sure that uh, when your level center unit is all the way down, you're at E and when it's all the way up, you're at full. And of course, um, the range is the range. So that's all you're really adjusting is the range of the gauge, where exactly its low point is. So its high point is going to come down accordingly. And you'll see more as we get into the video on how that works. Um, but it's just putting a screwdriver into that little slot that I showed you and adjusting it accordingly. Okay, and I think this is what our issue is. This is not matching advertised spec. It's supposed to be 330 ohms down to 30, I believe. And you can see that at bottom it is 260 and at top about 20. It's floating around a little bit. That's probably more me. Yeah, it's at 90, 20. So um, it's a nice linear sweep, but we're not getting full... Um, where we're supposed to be, which is why the gauge isn't reading full. So I'm going to probably pull this apart and see if the inside where the resistor is, is not going to its full range because I don't think it is. This is part of the fun of aftermarket stuff and hot rotting is you've just got to do what you got to do to make it work. And it's unfortunate that things aren't better from the factory than they are, but they are what they are. So we'll take this off. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I apologize if you can't, but I'll be right there in a moment when you can see. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just flipping this over so that I can see if I'm getting full range sweep on the resistor itself. So down in here, when this comes around, you'll see I'm not. I've got a ways to go on that end and a ways to go on that end. Now on the empty end, I don't care so much, but on the full end, I don't think I'm hooked up. I could be. I probably should be. Check my gauge here so that I can see. Okay, why aren't we... Oh, because we're not grounded there. No, we are. Hmm. Maybe it is because we're not grounded there. Yep, that's what it was. Hmm. So... Let's see what we can do here to try to bend that around a little bit more towards full. Just tweak that a little bit. Of course, I can't tell because that's getting it up to about seven eighths of a tank now. And I've still got a little more room on the sweep, so let's pull that out of there and bend it a bit more. I want to be very careful not to break it, obviously. Yeah, that's going to screw me up on the low end, and I know that. Okay, there we go. That's getting me closer to full. Yeah, 7 eighths is about as good as we're going to do, and I'm still reading on my empty, so that's good. Okay, let's put it back together again now and see how it works once it's... Uh, once it's back in position, because everything's kind of flopping around right now. I don't think I could, could get much more out of it than what I'm getting by tweaking it the way I did. So, fun, 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 until my daddy took the T-Bird away. <clears throat> okay, 
something's not right. No, my little thing has popped off. There we go. Okay. You want to be sure when you're putting it together that everything is the way that it should be. It's just too bad that, that really we can't make stuff in the aftermarket that's that works. Um, but I think this is going to be okay. And I'll show you what I got here in just a second. Just by that little tweak that I did. Um, <clears throat> remember that I used to be a fuel system engineer. And so level sender units were part of fuel modules that we worked on. So this is nothing new to me. Uh, understanding the principles, which is very simple. There's nothing complicated there, of course. But um, just understanding how they work, how to test them. Um, how they're engineered, stuff like that goes back to the days that I did this professionally. So um, the good news is I'm seeing so far, it looks like the low side is actually reading lower than it was, which doesn't totally make sense to me. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. I just put it on upside down. <laughs> Because all of a sudden, full is empty, and empty is full. <laughs> oh, yes. If the other level sender had worked, that's in the tank, I could have done the same thing. And just... Well, you little busca hosa. Um, I could have done the same thing and just flipped it to get the sweep the other way just by doing what I just did here. Um, but it's not the right ohm range, so it doesn't matter. This one's supposed to be the right ohm range, but, well, you know, stuff. All right, I'm probably boring you to tears putting this back together. Um, get in the spot it needs to oh that's why right there oh, the little it's a little spring plunger contact on the bottom and uh, it had gotten caught <clears throat> guess we're gonna have to loosen it up more are we having fun yet there's, yeah, just little pieces and parts that have to all just kind of fall together. There we go. Okay, very good. One more screw here. All right. I bent my stops out of the way also earlier so that I was sure that they weren't getting in the way and causing issues. So I got to bend those back down now. Okay. Well, by Jinkies. I think we can almost live with it. Of course, the next thing will be once we get it in the cell, does it actually work? Let's get you over here, let you, let you see the gauge. All right, so here we are at empty. And that's, remember, this is after we adjusted the gauge. So we're all the way down here at the bottom of our travel. And then we're going to move this up to full. So empty. I think I can live with that. At least I'll know when I'm getting down to a quarter of a tank. We'll know that uh, it's time to put gas in it. And of course, full doesn't matter as much. So I can live with that. You can see how inaccurate that gauge is because I'm bouncing it back and forth here 
and the gauge itself is just not in the same spot every time. But I think, I think that's close enough. So the next trick will be, once we get it in the cell, is the float arm going to allow that kind of travel? So we don't know, but I will try to adjust it so that, well, hold on a second. Okay, well, that's been an ordeal. But, um, so I was saying that I want to adjust the float arm so that when it's down, this is the float arm that has to slide in. So when it's down, it's not touching the bottom of the tank so that I have a little reserve fuel. Of course, on the, hopefully on the top or the same. I have no idea how long this is gonna need to be. I'm guessing that I can just probably duplicate the float arm that's in there um, once I get the other unit out. So that's our next step is we need to take this out so I can reach my hand inside and then get over here and try to take those bolts out because I think there's probably nuts on the back and I can't get my fat meat hooks up in there. Well, we managed to get that out of there without dropping any of the, without dropping the ratchet down in the tank. So that's good. Um, when I put it back together again, I'll probably do a little trick just to do something different. But there are definitely nuts on the inside of this. So I've got to go got a 5 16 or an eight millimeter wrench and put in there. And then we can zzz, 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 zzz that out of there and uh, making progress here. So good steps forward. be golden definitely not a unit that's designed to be serviced and uh, well <laughs> yeah but progress now we get to just lather rinse and repeat and hopefully the flange is exactly the same size I better be pulling my ground wires off. Probably should have my battery disconnected since I got so much explosive stuff right here. You don't need to witness my fiery death. Now the next thing we have to do is adjust this according to um, how we want it to go down in the cell to the bottom. Um, I almost have a feeling that I should take all of this off of here and bolt it on up here. Let's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what needs to happen, but let's see. Oh, that's just lovely. Are you kidding me? There it goes. Looks like everything lines up okay. And we've got bolts and parts and stuff all over in there right now. And I don't know where any of those screws are right there. Right? Okay, it looks like everything lines up okay. Question is, do I want it pointing exactly the way the other one was, which I don't think I have much choice. Yep, I think that's the way it needs to go, like that. Okay. It's really tempting to put the bolts from the bottom side up. We'll see, but I need to determine kind of how we're putting the float arm on here, where we're putting it. That's obviously a lot overkill right now. And that is way too low down there on the bottom. So we wouldn't be able to, it, it would hold the gas gauge up unless we, yeah. So we're gonna have to take this thing apart and I think eliminate this lower section and make it more like this 
so that the sending unit is right up there like that. So this is all modular. You can take it all apart and make all kinds of changes and stuff. And so we're just going to do that and stuff. You're just being a little pot licker, aren't you? Well, golly gee, Wally. What am I going to do? Put that on the wrong side? Couldn't have. So you probably noticed in the time lapse, um, I was measuring this one against that one, determining about where I need to cut this rod so that it uh, goes just almost to the bottom of the cell. It'll still be adjustable, um, but I, it's got way, way, way more rod than we need. So I'm gonna cut it off about here and hope that's the best. All right, let's see what we got now. So this goes in here, like so, and then we'll have to tighten it down. And it may still be too long, but I got to start somewhere and I'd rather cut it more than once. Yeah, see, it's actually binding in there, so I'm sure it's too long, but that's okay. We're gonna, we'll get it there. I'm just inching my way into it because if you cut it too short, then you got to make a new one. And I don't really want to do that. Well, I can already tell it's way too long because it's too high. So I guess I need to not only be cognizant of where it's at at the bottom of the cell travel, which is I'm pretty close. As you can see, but I also need to be cognizant of when it's at the top, which I don't think it's going to float up higher than the top of the tank. Hmm. So we've got a ratio issue here, which probably can be fixed by doing this. So you just got to kind of think in mechanical spatial terms. And if I bring this down like so, still not high enough, is it? And that's way too low, but that should be okay because I should be able to shorten it up. So let's see if bringing that down to the bottom of the travel and then shortening this rod more is gonna, gonna get us approximately where we need to be. Now that I'm down below that lip a little bit, I have more room to slide this in and see if we can make it work. So let's uh, say right there is full. probably too high and that's empty so let's check that against this it's pretty close now let's check it this way and it's actually you can see where this float would be if this was full is yeah up there at the top so this is actually I think a better scenario overall so hopefully again I'm just ballparking it we're not trying to make it perfect um, but just trying to get it to where it looks like it's about the same height with the float at the same level. And I think we're good there. So I need to shut this, cut this off here more, and then uh, I think we'll be golden. I'm going to make a mark on that with a marker. I just, want to, I just want it to clear so it's not hitting back here. All right, so that should do it. Bend that up a little bit where I want it. I feel that's pretty good. It's going to come over here like this. So, the question is, can we fit all this in there? Oh yeah, easily. So our next step now is to check it down in the tank and see uh, where it's at and uh, check it full and empty and make sure that we're good.
It's not hitting the top of the cell. It could go down just a skosh more. There's about two gallons of fuel in there right now. And uh, I hope it's floating. Because it's reading empty right now, totally. Is that bad to have two gallons of fuel in there? Yeah, probably. Let's see if we can extend that down just a bit more. Let's see if we took this and, and put it out a little bit more, as far as we can go. I don't want it to hit the bottom of the cell, but I want there to be a little bit of fuel in there while it's, and I think on our full side, we're gonna have an issue there, aren't we? Well, let's see what happens. We may have to go back where we were. And yes, I know, I know, we gotta deal with the, okay, it's, it's floating a little bit there. And let's bring it up. Yeah, it's hitting the top now. So I think we're gonna have to leave it go with the two gallons in the bottom. Because I wanna be darn sure that we're reading full when we're close to full. It's all just by guessing, by gosh, by golly. Okay, let's try that. See where we end up. Kind of a pain. We could go that way with it. That might be a better way to go. Okay, that fills up and it's not, it's not hitting the top of the cell. And that's all the way down. And the fuel in the tell right now is about two gallons and it's about there. So I think that might be okay. I guess our next step now, I want to just, just quickly hook it up with it in there, make sure where we're at, make sure that things are kind of sort of where we want them to be. This is just a mess back here. How does a guy work in this stuff? I don't know. Okay. And we'll just hold it. And oh yeah, my battery is disconnected. You don't want a big boom. There's gasoline and stuff, you know? Okay, we're good, we're good. I just need my yellow gauge. Oh yeah, my other yellow wire's not hooked up over there either. something there we go okay you see it's below E now <laughs> let's pick it up all right we can adjust the gauge a little bit there but I think that's good so I don't know if you could see that let's see if I can get this to where you can see it if I'm good, reach in there. So right now it's empty. Right now it's really empty because the clip fell off. There we go. Okay, so right now it's empty. And that's two gallons of fuel left. And then I pick it up. It's not hitting the top of the cell and it's pretty much full. So I think we're good. Hopefully you can see that. I can live with that. Don't expect it to be perfect. Not many exciting camera angles for you this time. I apologize, but that's just the nature of this job. So I want to pull that back out of there and there's one other thing that I want to do to it. Can you guess what it is? The first thing I want to do is make sure this is tight. Okay, it is, and then I need to take this screw back out and wind that wire up. 
I was thinking about shortening it, but eh, why, why bother? I just would like it to be a little bit neater and tidier than it was. And I already know where that screw was positioned, so um, I think if we're just really good here, we can just kind of wind things up a little bit and get them out of the way so they're not sticking out as bad. And that should do it. Not expecting perfection here. As long as it doesn't interfere with the float arm, we should be fine. Okay, now let's check that. That looks about like where it was, but let's stick it back in the tank. One more time. And the other one was in there kind of like this. I think I'm going to put this one like this. Uh, I've got some latitude there. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Have it twisted over like that. I got a feeling that other one might not have been installed properly. So let's pull it up. It's not hitting the top of the tank and it's not hitting the bottom of the tank. So I think we're good. Next step. Get the gasket on it off of the other one and start putting the bolts back in and that part of it will be done. I also got to go in there and fish out. There's a steel ring and a whole bunch of these bolts that fell in the bottom and there's just stuff. There's just a lot of stuff. This is kind of a pain. It's another example of an engineering design that really wasn't designed to be serviced. I'm sure for manufacturing this made some sense, but, but from a service standpoint, it is serviceable. But it sure could have been a whole lot easier. So uh, another one of those engineers, what were you thinking? There's so much of that. Uh, I know what they were thinking, manufacturing cost. But I don't like it. Don't ask me to. All right, so I've got all the bolts back in and I got a ground wire hooked up. Remember the other sending unit um, had a ground tab built onto it and this one doesn't. So, uh, and that's fine. But... Uh, this should work fine. We can just run it over to the chassis of the vehicle somewhere there and make it work just fine. So I think we're ready to uh, hopefully insert our sending unit assembly. And hopefully our orientation is proper. Because that would really slurp if I didn't get it right. Nope, it's good. Okay, there we go. So then we can put our nuts back on there. But before I do that, before I do that, I want to go in there and fish out all of the other stuff that's in there that fell because there's a lot. There's a big ring that I can't possibly take out of there, but it's all the other bolts. I want to make sure I have them all because once I put that in there, I'm not going to be able to reach in there and get them back out here anymore. Oh, there's one. Okay, let's count. So we should have two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? No, 10, 12. Okay, so one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Well, see, this is why, this is just why. So we're missing three. They're probably still down in there somewhere. All right, I gotta get a light. The fun and games begin of putting that back in. And that's what these washers were for. So there should be enough of those as well. There should be, what, five of those? There's four and five, okay. And then of course there's five of these little Why is there six of those? I don't know. There's only five there, so maybe there was an extra one in the tank. This one does kind of look kind of corroded, like maybe, yeah, it's an extra. And these are self-lockers, so that's good. All right. Hopefully, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. We should be good. Okay, just gonna get them started. And then I can go around and pss, 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 pss. These bolts are really long. 
I hope they're not going to interfere with any function. I don't think they should because that sending unit is down so low. There's two. Bet you didn't think it'd be such a complicated thing to put a sending unit in, eh? Whoops, that's why. That one up there is uh, not the right one. That explains it. I had to leave the last one, the worst one, for last. Oh, what a little pain in the butt. Get on there. Come on, get on there. There we go. Whew. Now that it's on there, it's not bad, but that was kind of a, yeah, a pain in the tush. And those are three eighths uh, bolts, I do believe, so. Bet you can't guess what we're going to do next. Yep, you're right. We're going to test it again. Always test, always test, always test. Now, this is a different wire than the one I had before. Um, so we'll just hopefully get this one to kind of fit down in there somewhere like that. And connect. And then we need our bower. And we're hooked up. We're reading empty. And, yeah, we're off a little bit in our adjustment there. But I think I'm going to make that adjustment right here in this. If I could see in there. Okay, right there. Okay. Yep, just about full, just about empty. I don't know if you can see that. Get my head out of your way. So it's at the bottom right now, and it's at the top right now. I can live with that. Again, quarter tank is empty, which is <laughs> probably close to half a tank. I can live with that. All things being equal, and all things being what would probably happen for me, um, I would get to the last bolt, and remember I've got this ratchet down inside of here, and sure as little puppies stink, no, probably not, but anyway, um, I would probably drop this down in the tank and then be spend the next 15 minutes cussing while trying to figure out how to reach down in there and get it out. So. I'm going to do a little trick here where I'm just going to tape and tie a piece of wire onto the ratchet so that if I do drop it, I can just pick it up. Not my first rodeo. Now I know I have a chance of the same thing happening with these 12 bolts, uh, but I feel like I've got a better chance, and you'll see on the video, cause you'll hear it all. I feel like I've got a better chance of getting that in there. Um, there's not really any way I can glue these in there, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and um, take the chance. Well, I just dropped a nut right in there, see that? Well, I'll be dipped. There it is. I wasn't expecting that. I feel like there's a better chance of me getting um, the bolts in there and stuff. If I'm, oh, we got the offset or what? Nope, just me being an idiot. Just want to get a couple of them up through there 
and then we'll have to put this on there and things are going to get really difficult from that point forward. Well, that's good. We had great success getting that done without any major issues. So now we're going to use our little special ratchet, like I said. And hopefully get all these put in here reasonably. There we go. Somehow I feel like taking it apart was a little easier than putting it together as being, but one at a time. There we go. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Good news is I'm better at doing this than I was before I took it apart. No. So we have our gas gauge in, it's functional, and of course it's not connected up right now, but if we did, we should be reading just a little bit above E. Okay, so we're two gallons or so, a little bit less than two gallons in the tank, and uh, it's reading about E, and I'm comfortable with that. It'll get close to full. I know I have reserves, so I won't trust this a whole lot anyway. Um, but I think that's good progress, for sure. So, we get in the car, our gas gauge of course is up under the dash, we turn the key on, it jumps up to here, and uh, we have a working gas gauge. So the next steps then are going to be is to get this gauge mounted up under the dash with the rest of the gauges, and of course run the official wire in. And uh, so we're really, really, really close here to having the functional and working gas gauge. Well, I kind of got to admit that I was really dreading that job. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be an easy task to get that other sending unit out of there and get the new one in there. Um, as far as universal sending units go, this Bosch unit is adequate. I would like to have seen what it would have been like had I had the Sun Pro unit that was to match the gauge if my reading would have been better. but. We did an ohm sweep on it. We saw that the ohm sweep was off a little bit, but we were able to make the adjustments to get it really close on both ends. And I think that's about as good as we're gonna be able to do. This is all a temporary setup anyway. It's all gonna change once we get the Ford tank under the car. Um, but the way things are going right now, this temporary could be here for five years and we'll be able to enjoy using the car. So the next steps coming now are, I wanna get all this wiring cleaned up and I need to get that gauge mounted up under the dash but I think we're gonna stop there. We've got a lot of content for today and we'll leave that wiring and hooking that fuel gauge up for another day's project. I really appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that, hit those bells so you receive those notifications. Drop some comments down there. What's been your experience with fuel gauges and things like that? Have you hooked up an aftermarket fuel gauge? How did that work for you? What about your OE gauges? What kind of problems have you had with those? Um, also, we're on Facebook, there's lots of discussion going on over there, forward slash my car shop, and of course, we are on Instagram, forward slash my car shop. All right, guys and gals, I think that's going to do it for today, so let's just remember, it's a very important thing, we need to rock. Hey.